Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. As you can probably tell, I'm not in New York City anymore. I am in beautiful Vancouver, and it's great to be home. This rundown is going out to our old buddy, Lung Kisser, who loves watching the classic reviews with Tommy and I. Here's your rundown, buddy. Some of the best platforming video games in history are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Capcom has announced that the Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 will hit the Switch simultaneously on May 22nd. The collections have already been available on other platforms for a few years and give players all of the original Mega Man games from 1 to 10, complete with bonus content like art galleries and alternate music. The Switch version will also have something that wasn't available on most other platforms. It will include a new challenge mode that remixes classic levels. The Switch version is also getting the special fan-made challenge levels, previously only available on the 3DS version, and those can be unlocked on the Switch using the Mega Man Amiibo. Both of the Legacy Collections are coming to the Switch as Capcom is preparing Mega Man 11, which is an all-new game done in the style of the classics. That's coming to the Switch and other platforms before the end of the year. Thanks to the success of Black Panther, it looks like Marvel is about to take a chance on another supposedly risky hero. It appears that the studio is finally going to make their long-rumored Black Widow movie. I've been compromised. The news comes from Captain America himself, Chris Evans. Speaking with ET Canada, Evans says that thanks to the explosive performance of Black Panther, Marvel is more likely to take risks moving forward, and in his opinion, they'll have the same success when Captain Marvel comes out and then the Black Widow movie comes out. Captain Marvel has already been announced, so Evans might have accidentally let slip that an unannounced Black Widow movie will follow. This moron is giving me everything. Then again, he might have been just making a prediction, so we'll have to wait and see. I'll persuade you. Before it came out, Black Panther was considered risky because analysts predicted that audiences would be less likely to see a movie headlined by a black superhero, which is the same thing they've been saying about female-led superhero movies for years. Black Panther and last year's Wonder Woman have obviously proven that idea wrong, so Marvel and Disney will probably want to capitalize on Black Widow sooner or later. Scarlett Johansson has previously stated that she would love to star in her own Black Widow movie and would do everything she could to make it a success. She'll next appear in Avengers Infinity War this summer. Hasbro is toying with a new way of creating toys. The company has announced a new initiative called HasLabs, which is basically a crowdsourcing platform for new toys. Here's how it works. Hasbro comes up with a new toy idea, then lets fans participate by suggesting tweaks and changes to the design. Fans then have the ability to pre-order the toy before it's made, and if it gets enough pre-orders, Hasbro will actually make it. If it doesn't get enough, then those who've paid will get a refund. The first toy unveiled as part of the HasLabs initiative is a special version of Jabba's sail barge from Return of the Jedi, which is pretty big and detailed and runs for a Jabba-sized 500 bucks US. <laughs> Hasbro hopes HasLabs will make it easier for them to create toys like this, which appeal to a niche market. A certain toy will only get made if enough people are interested, which makes it less risky financially for the company. Rival toy maker LEGO already has a similar initiative called LEGO Ideas, where fans can suggest new LEGO sets that then become a reality if the idea is popular enough with other users. I guess the world can never have too much plastic. <laughs> We're gonna have to keep waiting for the next big game from the makers of Alan Wake and Quantum Break. Developer Remedy Entertainment, whose last big game Quantum Break came out in 2016, has confirmed that their long-awaited next project will launch in 2019. Codenamed P7 or Project 7, very few details about the mysterious new game have been revealed, but we do know that it will be an original IP not based on an existing franchise. It's also not being published by Microsoft, so it will be a multi-platform game and not just an Xbox exclusive like Remedy's last few titles. Quantum Break was a little disappointing, so hopefully P7 could put the studio back on top. We'll have more details as they come in. P7 isn't the only new game on the way from Remedy. They've also revealed that they're starting work on a second unannounced project with full development slated to begin later this year. There's no word yet on when that one will arrive. It looks like Nintendo Switch owners are gravitating away from physical game copies. The first sales data for the new Switch bundle of Bayonetta 1 and 2 have come in, and the data indicates some pretty interesting things about where the platform might be going. According to the UK sales tracking website ChartTrack, Bayonetta actually sold fewer copies on the Switch than Bayonetta 2 did at launch on the less popular Wii U back in 2014. That comes as a bit of a surprise given that other Wii U ports like Mario Kart 8 have actually sold better on the Switch, but here's a possible explanation. The Bayonetta sales data only includes physical copies, which means Switch users 
might be instead buying the digital download version of the game. This would mean that Switch owners are slowly gravitating away from physical media, which is a trend that's already being seen on other platforms. We'll let you know when data from other countries is revealed. If you are thinking about switching to downloads, you should know that the Switch only comes with a paltry 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which isn't enough for some big games. So you may want to invest in a micro SD card or wait for Nintendo to make a bigger Switch Pro. Lock off, Featherface. That wraps us up for the rundown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode for you. And in the meantime, we've got lots of other content for you to check out. So please do. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, that if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.